My fiancé casually texted me while doing it with a guy who I shouldn't worry about and she begged me to stay, but what I did instead made her cry like a goat. New to Reddit but thought it would help to write down what happened to me. Our story begins in spring of 2016 when I met a girl we'll call Rosie. Well, Rosie immediately hit it off and began dating. Rosie was a shy, beautiful, and kind girl, but she had her demons. Her biggest flaw and the one that caused the most issues throughout our relationship was that she was a serial liar and just could not tell the truth or accept fault in anything. She kept up lies and hid things for months, sometimes years. I could give plenty of examples, but I think you get the point. But no matter what she did I always gave it a pass because of her background, her father abandoned her family and her brother and grandma were misusive towards her. Most of our relationship was long distance since I'm originally from Mexico but work in the US. Honestly looking back there were huge red flags and I should have broken it off much earlier. Immediately getting into the relationship she became extremely jealous slash controlling and forbade me from talking slash hanging out with other girls, made me delete all the girls off my social media and forbid me from going to parties. I said fine but that I expected the same from her. I respected the rules she made for me she did not. She never missed a party, never respected what I told her, and on multiple occasions I found hidden social media accounts. Eventually over time I became the same way as her, controlling and mean. Even though our relationship was pretty toxic there were also a lot of great moments slash memories. We would text slash call slash video chat every single day for hours and hours. I went to visit her as frequently as possible. When I was there in person we had so many great moments together. Dinners, holidays, nice gifts, matching outfits, dancing, going to parties together, etc. But the most special moment was when we lost our V-cards together. The whole time we were together she always wanted two things, to move out of her house and a baby. We had our normal ups and downs as in any couple, and so we dated and remained together year after year. Cut forward to about July 2020, by this point I had become more mean and uncaring. The last few months I had been more cold because I was tired of the constant lies. She had basically been begging me to agree to marry her and get together when I went this year, but with the whole COVID situation, I wasn't sure if I would even be able to travel so I would just say that I didn't want to talk about it. One night she mentions that she wants to start working at a new place, greenhouses, however I say no because that place is infamous for how toxic it is. Most of the people who work there are young but pill-obsessed persons, alcoholics, and involved in gangs. How do I know? Because I have family members that work slash have worked there and came out pill-obsessed persons, alcoholics, pregnant, or all three. Well she said fine I won't go and that was that. Over the next several months I noticed several changes in her schedule, her appearance, behavior, mannerisms, etc. She became more aggressive, would always have to leave at a certain time, and became noticeably much thinner. Also she began receiving strange friend requests on her social media including one from a guy that seemed off and she seemed really really insistent on adding him, but we'll get to who he was. Over all these months I asked repeatedly what was going on and to just come clean but she never did. Cut forward to last week and I found out the horrible horrible truth from some family members and friends. In July she did start working there behind my back, but that's just the beginning. In August she began hanging out with the wrong crowd. In September she started talking to a guy we'll call Tony. Tony is a huge pill-obsessed person and his family with a local pill lord, how do I know because at the time he was dating one of my cousins who he also got obsessed with pills. Well I'm not sure of exactly when but around that time Rosie began using crystal ice as well as other pills probably influenced by Tony. In October Rosie began cheating on me with Tony and Tony began cheating on my cousin with Rosie. I knew something had happened because three Fridays in a row Rosie completely disappeared and ghosted me with the excuse of visiting family, but in reality she was getting high and drunk with Tony and her friends. Throughout November and December she would randomly disappear some days including Christmas Eve with the excuse of going to visit family, but in reality she had basically become Tony's personal sex toy he would get her drunk and high then have his way with her which he had done to many girls before her. 
The days after she would disappear she would be completely out of it she could barely speak. She complained about being tired, sore, sleepy, light-headed, etc. I thought she was sick but in reality she was hung over from drinking, doing pills, and having sex with Tony. The last six months of my life were a complete lie and filled with manipulation. Every day she would get high, drunk, make out and sleep with Tony, and at night she would text slash call slash video chat with me. Sometimes she would literally be with him making out, doing pills, fornicating while texting with me. She would then literally go and call slash video chat with me and act like nothing happened. Sometimes she would finish talking with me on the phone then leave to go be with him. I know this because I would later go on to see pictures of them together at times when I was texting with her, and they would be seen together late at night. The entire time I would constantly ask what was wrong because I could see something was wrong. She was getting skinnier and skinnier, and her mannerisms and body language changed. She never confessed anything, not one thing and lied until the very end. She would tell me I was the one and only, that I was her world, that she wanted a family and to spend her entire life with me. She would send me revealing pictures saying they were for me when in reality they were for Tony. We would video chat and she would show me her body and brag about how thin she was getting and give me little shows all the while giving it all to Tony. In October I let her know that this year I wanted to move in together and get married and even then she didn't tell me anything. Then we get the worst part. How do I know she was trying to pin his baby on me? Well she had always wanted a baby and even went as far as lying about being on the pill just so I would have sex with her with no protection but I never let it happen. She faked being pregnant twice and both times I went to get tests and both times they came out negative. So more than likely she did the same thing to Tony, and well since Tony is known to not be a good person if he didn't want anything to do with the baby she would need a backup me. All throughout December she complained about stomach issues, pains, cramps, nausea etc, but when I asked if she knew why she would always say she didn't know. In early December she randomly one day started talking dirty to me telling me how the first night I arrived she really wanted to have sex with me but it had to be with no protection, so it would be special, sounds suspicious. On December 28th we were all good talking about how soon we would be together and start a life together. Then on December 29th she randomly texts me saying we need to talk and basically tries every excuse under the sun to break up with me. On December 30th I found out everything and cut off anything to do with her. Then two days later on January 1st she left and moved in with Tony. Why would Tony actually get together with someone when he had done the same thing to many girls before Rosie? Last time we had contact she mentioned she quit using ice and was going to have blood work and tests done. So what happened? Well on December 29th she more than likely took a pregnancy test which came out positive and probably told Tony, if he wanted to be with her then she would break up with me, and if he didn't well she would break up with him and let me get there without ever knowing anything. Now, they are living together and probably going to marry soon. For plus years with me and she legitimately started doing ice and cheating within two months of meeting some random pill-obsessed person. Literally moved in with him probably pregnant within six months of meeting him. I was with her for two years before we ever even considered having intimacy, but she gave it up to Tony in two months, probably even less. So now here I am broken and left in pieces. I can't sleep at night because of the horrible mental images of them together. I miss the Rosie I once knew, not the monster that is there now. Ice and bad influences made her even more of a monster. I have thought about Zuik asterisk die on several occasions. I'm on antidepressants and sleeping medication and I start therapy on Monday. Update. It's been two weeks since D-Day when I found out all the messed up things my ex had been doing behind my back. The first week I lost my mind and completely went insane. Stopped eating, no sleep, would have constant breakdowns, etc. I reached out for help and got on antidepressants and sleeping medication. I also started going to therapy. All those things have helped, especially the sleep. I'm still not 100% over everything obviously, I still get angry every now and then. My heart still hurts remembering all the good memories and imagining the person I once loved with another. However these are only minor inconveniences at this point. The thing that has made the biggest impact on my recovery has been my mentality. 
At first I let all that hate and rage take over me. I let it hurt me. However, I realize that I can't let the monster win. I can't let her get the last laugh. I can't let her see me defeated. I'm a better person than her or the trash she chose to be with. The life she chose to live leads to nothing good. She'll eventually come crashing down, and when that happens I want to be there to watch it happen. I turn that hate and anger into motivation. Motivation to better myself and to be as successful as possible. Mentally, physically, and financially. One day when I inevitably run into her I want her to see me succeeding while she wallows in the pit she chose for herself. I want to see her realize the stupidity of what she did. I want her to regret what she did in her life. Then I will have the last laugh. Then I will have completed my mission. Success is the greatest revenge. Stay strong out there kings and queens. Final update. Hi everyone this is hopefully the last post I will make on here. Today marks exactly one month since I found out who I thought was the love of my life had become a ice-obsessed person and cheated on me for months behind my back. The more time passes the more I realize how lucky I was to get away from that narcissistic, manipulative, lying monster. The first week was without a doubt the absolute worst days of my life. I didn't sleep at all at night, I spent my days and nights walking back and forth, and all I could think about was how could she have done this to me? How can someone be so evil to lie to my face for so long? How could she sleep with another guy then talk with me like nothing was happening? I had attempted Zuik Asterisk died in the past and was considering trying again. As the days passed and I reached out to old friends I had lost because of her, I realized she was a monster from the beginning. I found out she had done this in the past. I found out she had kept seeing slash texting with her ex before me behind my back for at least a year into our relationship. I found out from her ex best friend that she had gone as far as saying that if I didn't pay attention to her she would try to get with my brother. She was nothing but a monster in disguise who had fooled not only me, but my family and her family as well. As the weeks have passed I have had good days and bad. Nights are definitely the worst and now that it's been a month memory lane is hitting hard. A lot of days I feel lonely and sad. However no matter how bad I feel, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much I miss having someone there I keep pushing forward. It does and will get better. Turn all that hate and anger you have into motivation, motivation to better yourself as much as possible. Be as successful as you can. Better yourself mentally, physically, and financially. You can't let the monster defeat you. You have to show it who's boss. You did nothing wrong, you were the catch in that relationship, and you have the strength to overcome this. They are nothing but trash and you deserve so much better. My advice to anyone who is going through this is to stay strong, and don't be afraid to seek help slash advice. Reach out to family, friends, if you have no one feel free to message me I'll be happy to listen. Seek medical and psychological help if you need to. I myself take antidepressants and sleeping medication. Sleep will be one of your best friends. Change your mentality as I did, use that rage as motivation to better yourself rather than letting it destroy you. Use me as living proof that you can overcome this. You can do it. You're not alone and deep down you have the strength to not only survive, but come out of this stronger. Stay strong kings and queens we all deserve better, and we all deserve to be happy. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. She sounds like a covert narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder. I cannot help but wonder why you never tried to follow up on any of her so obvious bullcrap? We live and learn. I used to call my wife Alibi Ike because she had a freaking excuse for everything and literally could not ever say anything was her fault and getting to say she was sorry was like pulling teeth. By the way, so all this crap with Rosie was happening during COVID? Really, no wonder we can't get people to take it seriously, you didn't. OP reply. Yes, I have read up on the different types of narcissists, and she definitely fits some of the descriptions here. Give me a second and I'll copy the message I sent to a friend about it. Also yes all this happened this year, and no I didn't travel, and I always wore a face mask use hand sanitizer etc. Comment 2. Can you get a health check on the unborn baby? 
If she is still using pills the baby might get obsessed. Even if the baby is not yours. I'm not saying you have to do the health check. But something like the government. OP reply. No, I cut off all ties with her a week ago plus like I said in my post I'm in the US she's in Mexico living with Tony. When she decided to cheat she became his problem not mine. The last time we had communication she mentioned she quit doing ice and was getting blood work etc done so I imagine she must be trying to sober up because she's pregnant. In Mexico the government is useless and corrupt. So even if I wanted to help there really isn't anything I could do. Unless she realizes her mistakes and seeks help on her own nothing will change. There's really only a few ways to get out of the life she chose to live, especially in Mexico jail, on the streets, or passing away. My friend went bonkers when I told her it's not a great idea to have a baby at her age, but she insisted and did it. Recently I found out my friend, F-18, is pregnant. She had been trying despite people telling her that having a baby is not a great idea for a teenager who is not mentally or financially stable. My friend and I had an argument a few weeks ago because I agreed with her family and mutual friends about it being a bad idea to have a baby when she is not able to support herself or the baby on her own. My friend took a test and found out she in fact was pregnant and went to a doctor to confirm it. My friend won't stop talking about how she feels the baby kicking even though it is not possible because she is only a few weeks in, how her boyfriend talks to her stomach and how she can't eat certain things because it upsets the baby. It gets pretty annoying with how much she talks about it, being a pregnant teen has become her new personality trait, and it's all she has been talking about for the past week and a half. She makes sure to mention how she's pregnant whenever she gets the chance to mention it. Today she asked me what I was doing, and I told her I was putting a clothing dresser together, and her response to that was I need to buy my baby a dresser soon. I told her not every conversation we have has to be about her baby. She was outraged and told me I should be happy for her, and it's just her motherly instinct to talk about her baby. Edit, I should have added more context. Friend is five to six weeks pregnant. Friend believes the baby will solve all of her life problems such as depression and fix her unhealthy relationship with her BF and family. Edit 2, I never said I wasn't happy for her, I just said I don't want to talk about her being pregnant every time we have a conversation. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. LOL No one should be happy over a freaking 18-year-old being pregnant. Reddit apparently has lots of people having babies between 18 to 20 and acting like it's all fine and dandy. No one in that age bracket is mature enough to have a child. And most people in that age bracket can't afford one either. And even if she was older, you still wouldn't be an a-hole. Being pregnant doesn't mean that only your feelings matter. Comment 2. I think normalizing for many people, especially younger ones, that pregnancy causes a lot of changes including those in your social group is a possibility. Some friends aren't there for the long haul, and it may hurt but it happens. If someone says you talking about the baby every waking moment is bothering me. That's a valid boundary setting. Doesn't make either of them a-holes, they just have different mindsets. You can accept your friend's choices and not want to be part of that support system or part of that journey, and that's okay too. Figure out if this friendship is worth it to you. Figure out your boundaries now.